Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean and in today's lesson we're going to talk about how to find an absolute extrema on a specific interval. And Absolute extrema meaning absolute maximum or absolute minimum. And so to start us off, let's draw something real quick here. So we're going to have this function on an interval. Here's a starting point and let's have us go down and up. Sharp corner will come down a little bit and then maybe come back up and then down. Okay, I'm just kind of I'm making this up as I go. So we have this weird little function going on. So let's identify some things that are happening within this. So here I have my endpoints. Uh, end points. There's one and there's another. Okay, so there's my endpoints. And then here I have a little minimum value. This minimum value is considered a critical point. I'll call this a CP critical point because the derivative is zero right there. It has a horizontal tangent line. Boom. This one right here is also a critical point. So why is that a critical point right there? Because the derivative is undefined at the corner. Here we have another critical point because of the little uh, slope being zero. We have a minimum. And then here the slope is also zero. So we have a maximum. That is a critical point. So here we have critical points and endpoints. These things, if we could find them on a function, will help us identify all the candidates for the possibility of an absolute extrema. So, so go ahead and write these two things down. Candidates for an absolute extrema on an interval are the critical points and the endpoints. So if you'll look at this graph, I have the absolute highest point as you come across here is this critical point here. The absolute lowest point of this graph is way down here at the end point. But the absolute highest has to be one of these two things. It's either going to happen at a critical point or at an end point. You don't have to know anything else except where are these things and then is it the lowest point or is it the highest point. Let's do an example and show you what I mean here. We have this function f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. We're going to find the absolute maximum value and the absolute minimum value of this function on the interval negative 1 half to 4. So the first thing we do is we've got to figure out the all the candidates. So some of the candidates are the critical points. We get the critical points by taking the derivative, that's uh, 6x, and then where does the derivative not exist? Nowhere. This one, this derivative is kind of easy, so there's no issues with not existing. But we do need to figure out when it equals 0. So let's factor out a 3x. That leaves me with x minus 2. And then we'll set it equal to 0 and solve. So my critical points are going to happen at x equals 0 and at x equals 2. Now, I do not care if these are mins or maxes. I don't need to figure that out, whether which one's a relative min, which one's a relative max. It does not matter because I don't care about relative. I care about absolute, which one is the highest point. So here's what we do. We have four candidates, these two critical points and these two endpoints. So I'm going to list them. Uh, here, I'm just going to list them in order. So f of negative 1 half, there's my my endpoint, and then where's the next one? Zero. So I'm going to take the x value of zero and plug it into the function. And then the next x value is two. I'm going to take f of two, plug it into the function. And then the last endpoint, which is f of four, and plug the, all of these into the function. So by plugging all these x values in, it spits out the y values. Whichever one is the highest is the maximum value which whatever one of these is the lowest is the minimum value. That's the absolute minimum value, whichever one's lower. You can't get lower than that because if you could, there it would have shown up. Like these are the only possibilities of having max and mins. All right, so now you could plug these in just by hand. In fact, this one's easy. If you plug in the zero there, zero there, we get a one. So that one's pretty easy. Two cubed, we could probably handle that. Four, that gets a little bit harder. Negative one half, yeah, I don't want to deal with one half to the third power. And So let me show you. If you're allowed to use a calculator, this is how you can speed it up. So zoom in here on this. I've plugged in x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. That's the function. And then I'm going to go to my second, my table setup here. And on the table setup, I just want to make sure my independent is set on ask. And then I can go back to my table uh, or here to the table. And then I just plug in the numbers that I want. So I want a negative 0.5, enter. And then boom, it spits it out. Zero, I already did that one. Two and four enter. And then once I have these, then I can just write them down real quick. So I've got this one is 0 0.125. 
f of 2 is negative 3, and f of 4 is 17. So here we have the 17 is the highest. That is the absolute maximum value. So the absolute maximum value is 17. It's highest. There's nothing else higher than that. And then similarly, we've got the absolute minimum, and the absolute minimum value on this one is the lowest, which is negative 3. Okay, that's how you do this. You take all the critical points and all of the endpoints, and you have to show that you've checked each one. Okay, that's vital for answering these. On the free response problems that you'll have when we get more into this, you're going to have problems where you absolutely have to show that you've checked all of the numbers. And then you can say which one is the highest and which one is the lowest. One more type of problem before I let you go, and that is when you have the graph of f prime, can we figure out the absolute maximum and the absolute minimum. So we've already practiced how to find the relative min and max just based on the f prime, and that is if we go from positive to negative, we know we have a relative max. But what about an absolute? So this gets a little trickier. So let's see all this from negative 3 to 0. That whole area is showing that f prime is greater than 0. All of this part of it, f prime is greater than 0. Well, that means that f is increasing that whole time. F is increasing from negative 3 to 1. Now the reason I'm bringing that up is because that means this went really high. Even here it's still increasing. F prime is decreasing, but not F. F is still increasing because F prime is positive all the way till you get right here. Now it's turned around because we have a relative max here, and now it's going negative, 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 and now it's a minimum here. So we've got a max and then a minimum, and now it's going up again and stops. So when it goes up and stops, that might be, that's a maximum right there. But is it the highest? Which one is the absolute highest? So I'm going to do something that's going to look a little weird here. And that is I'm filling these in with a couple colors so you can see something going on. What I've done is I filled in the area between the, the curve and the x-axis. Now this is what we're going to be doing in unit 6. Okay, don't freak out by this. This is not nearly as, uh, as crazy as it first looks, but we'll get into a lot of detail in unit six on this, but just to, for this lesson, it will help you identify something real quick. And that is all the green area is where the graph's going up and all the yellow area is where the graph is going down. So if we start here and it goes up throughout this whole time and then it goes down for, for a while, and then it goes up again just for a little bit. You have to think, which one's higher? At x, So we have a possibility of a maximum at x equals 1, and we also have a possibility at x equals 4. Both of those would be possibilities of being maxes because it's going up, 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 and stops. Which one is higher? Is x equals 1 higher or x equals 4 higher? x equals 1 is the absolute max at x equals 1 because this yellow area is where it dipped down. It's going down, 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 down. And that's bigger than this green area here. Okay, so because of that, it went down further than it went up. So this x equals 1 is a higher maximum than this one would be. Okay, oh, that was weird, confusing, I know. Let's check this with an absolute min. So the absolute minimum value could either be at x equals 3, or it could be at x equals negative 3. Why negative 3? Because when we started off, the graph is now going up, 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 right? It's This whole thing's going up, so it's starting off at a minimum. The question is, which one is lower? Is this one lower than x equals 3, than this one? So let's, let's think about this. All of this green area represents that it's gone up, 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 up. This yellow area represents that it's going down, 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 down. Well, this green area here on the left is a ton bigger than this one. So that x equals negative 3 would represent the absolute minimum on the interval here. Okay, so we're throwing some unit 6 stuff out at you, but it's just so that you can kind of visualize which one was was uh, increasing for more than the decreasing part of it. All right, a little confusing. I'm only putting a couple of these on the practice. You're not going to have to stress too much about this part of it yet. It's more important so far for finding on the intervals, it's dealing with these types of problems where you check all the critical points and you do the endpoints. Okay, rock that mastery check and I will see you back in the next lesson.